It's 8 a.m. and Professor Denny Dowds is teaching a class at East Stroudsburg University. The subject is near and dear to his heart. The former head football coach of 45 years at the school is the instructor of the principles of coaching. His students are somewhat aware that he used to patrol their sidelines. I know he used to be a football coach. I think he's a legend in ESU's eyes. <laughs> I at least hope so. <laughs> it's an 8 a.m. class that I go into, and most 8 a.m.s are boring, but he uh, makes the class more enjoyable by interacting and uh, telling people different ways to look at things. What they may not know is that Dowds is one of the latest inductees into the Pennsylvania Sports Hall of Fame. While coaching at East Stroudsburg, Dowds became the all-time winningest coach in the history of the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference. From 1974 through 2018, his record was 264 wins, 204 losses, and three ties. His teams won nine PSAC championships and won the state game three times and tied once. His teams claimed five East Division titles and made four trips to the NCAA Division II playoffs. In 2005, he guided the team to the school's only Northeast Regional Championship. Dennis Dowds was born in Indiana, Pennsylvania on February 16, 1941. The son of a food broker and a homemaker, he became a four-sport athlete in high school. Some say he grew up to be the town's second most favorite son. Actor Jimmy Stewart was the first. At an early age, Dowds knew he wanted to be a football coach. It goes all the way back to, to when somebody, a, a, a teacher, asked, what are you going to do when you grow up in eighth grade? And I told him I wanted to be a head football coach in the PSAC. And I, I found out that hey, most head football coaches at that particular time uh, were physical education majors. And in the western part of the state, where could you get physical education as a major in college? Slippery Rock. When Dowds arrived at Slippery Rock, he was a guard on the football team and became friends with sophomore center Quentin Curry. We started out at Slippery Rock. Teams weren't that successful. Then we got pretty good. And he was one of the guys that got pretty good along with the program. And in his senior year, he was all PSAC first team, all state, Associated Press, all state, and he was also NAIA All-American. In fact, he received in the 1962-63 academic year the most valuable senior athlete and uh, earned every bit of it. He was active on campus, he was active in dormitories, active in, in uh, intramurals. He was an all-around student and that never changed. Every place he went, he was that guy who always stood out. Curry says it was there that Dowd's positive style of leadership began to blossom before a playoff game against, of all schools, East Stroudsburg. Danny was a captain, co-captain, and the two captains got together, and they went into the locker room at Slippery Rock the night before, and in green paint, painted Beat Stroud on every team member's helmet. So when the players came in to get dressed for the game on that Saturday, they went to their locker room, and all their helmets said, Beat Stroud, Beat Stroud, Beat Stroud. Slip Rock did beat East Stroudsburg that night, or th that day, but I never knew whether that was a factor or not. But I'll tell you one thing, the people who reconditioned those helmets were so upset when it came time to get, them, get those helmets ready for the following year. And those days, you didn't have budgets where you go out and buy helmets for the heck of it. After college, Dowds landed his first job as an assistant football coach at McDowell High School in Erie. And after two years, he went on to West Virginia to obtain a master's in physical education and became a graduate assistant coach while teaching. Not long after, Curry was being considered for a coaching position at East Stroudsburg. I had an opportunity to come to East Stroudsburg in, in 1965 for the 1966 season. And I, did, and I had another offer, and I thought that offer would be better for me. And I, Charlie Reese, the head football coach at ESU, I called Charlie, I said, Charlie, I got a guy for you. He's at West Virginia. I think he's applied for the position. You can't miss. So he, he interviewed Danny. Danny came and the rest is history. Dowds took that job as an assistant coach and told his wife, Judy, they would give it a try for a few years. 
I, I said, hey, Hon, we're, we're only going to be here for a year or two. From time to time, she, after 58 years of marriage, she still reminds me of that, that statement right there. Because we're Western Pennsylvania, so the thought of going next to New Jersey was just too far away from family to me. So he said, we'll give it three years tops, and we'll probably have to move anyway. But so I said, okay. So we came, and three led to, what, 56 or 58 or whatever. After eight years as an assistant, Dowds earned a promotion. Uh, when Charlie uh, Reese decided to go to get his uh, PhD, uh, they asked me, uh, John Eiler, the athletic director, asked me if I'd like to be the head football coach. And I said, yeah, I, I would like to do that. And that was in 1974. Over the next 45 years, East Stroudsburg University would have six presidents and just one head football coach. In 45 years as a head coach, Dowd says he never had one favorite team. Well, you know, I get asked the question a lot, and I use this analogy. If you're a parent and somebody comes up and asks, who's your favorite son or daughter in the family? What do you tell them? You don't. You don't because you love them all. And we loved every one of our kids. It was that love for his players and his staff that defined Dowd's career. It was awesome to play for Denny Dowds, and I've thanked him many times, but um, I can't say enough good things about the way he is as a coach and a man and a role model and whatever else cliche thing you want to say about him, it's all true. He's not just a great football coach. He's a great person and a great role model and a great mentor he actually cared about you and you knew it. John Sellen and his wife Roseanne live just north of East Stroudsburg. I'd like to say like, that I had the biggest compliment ever in my life, well, pretty much ever. I went to a homecoming game, she made me go. And <laughs> <laughs> I really didn't want to go, but I really did want to see uh, Coach Dowds. So after the game, um, he was walking off the field and I was waiting outside the gate and I just went to shake his hand and he remembered my name. That, that was huge for me. I was like, thousands of players he's coached. How would he possibly remember my name? And, um, but he did. Mike Lush was an outside linebacker who played for Dowds from 1992 through 1996. Now an assistant high school coach in Lee Heighton, Lush recalls Dowd's coaching style. It was certainly evident that uh, he, he was he was a man in charge, um, but but he did it in a way that he did it with enthusiasm. Uh, there was quite an age difference between uh, he and his players, but um, he was able to relate to uh, uh, the younger players uh, at the time. Uh, but he was not an in-your-face type of uh, coach, and how you treat people is kind of the way. I learned and that spirit of the warrior spirit and how you attack things in life, uh, that, that's remained constant in my life. Down's demeanor may have been the reason why he lasted so long in the sport. Some coaches get frustrated if they're losing and they speak out of turn and they take it out on people. He would come home always the same. Every year, if it was a loss, he would come up from the garage and say, sorry guys, we weren't very good today. And then that was the end of it for him too. Because Sunday morning, there weren't computers and things. You had to break down films and get ready for the kids and game day. And so that was like, the that's behind us, move forward. His method was not lost on his players as 31 went on to be recognized as All-Americans and six were finalists for the Harlan Hill Trophy, which goes to the most valuable player in Division II. Current ESU head coach Jimmy Terwilliger won that award in 2005. He's been a mainstay here. His consistent approach to uh, you know, doing it the right way, doing it in the right fashion, doing it for the right reasons, are what he built the East Stroudsburg University football. And I'm very blessed to have played for him, coached with him, uh, and then being able to pass the torch to me is an honor. Two of his players, Ray Yankavonis and Dan Murray, were drafted by NFL teams. Others who also played in the NFL include Chris Gerhardt, 
Mike Lush, and Mike Reichenbach, who appeared in 119 games, the most by any player from East Stroudsburg University. There's no denying that Dowd's had exceptional players over the years, but like every coach, he would look for an edge that would give his team an advantage, especially in a big game. One such occasion occurred in 1982, when East Stroudsburg was facing Westchester on a Saturday night on the road in a Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference semifinal. Quinson Curry, who had joined the staff as the offensive coordinator, remembers. Now, if you ever been to a Westchester football game, you get down there to play, one of the, you have a distraction, and that's the Westchester marching band of 200 plus strong. And what they do is, they, whenever they feel that they need a boost in their football team, then they play that, they play that fight song. Well, Denny had an idea. At that time, Dr. Dennis Bell was the president of ESU. And uh, Denny went to Dr. Bell and said, would you have a copy of Westchester's fight song? And Dr. Bell said, how many copies do you want? <laughs> so we got a copy. So we came on the practice field that Tuesday in, in Westchester week. We go through our, our drills and so forth. We get the teamwork. All of a sudden, loudspeakers and our stadium start blaring during practice the Westchester fight song. It was deafening because that's what we were going to face on that Saturday night. It was that way. Tuesday's practice, Wednesday's practice, Thursday's practice. It drove us crazy. So, fine. We thought, well, Westchester, they start playing a song. All of a sudden, the team get fired up. It wasn't Westchester team got fired up. It was ESU's team got fired up. They were going crazy. And in the fourth quarter, in a very close game, the Westchester captain went to his coach and said, Coach, tell the band to quit playing a fight song. It's firing up the Warriors. Some coaches have a coaching tree, former players and assistants who have gone on to work with other teams as they form their own careers. With Denny Dowds, it was more like an orchard. He encouraged coaching candidates to become graduate assistants, and admittedly, he never got caught up in the coaching lineage. We've, we've touched base with probably over 225 coaches. Now, they all weren't paid coaches, a lot of them were volunteers, a lot of them were grad assistants, those kind of uh, coaches, entry level places. But I always thought, let's give her, if somebody wants to get in the, into the profession, let's give them an opportunity. Quinton Curry joined Dowd's staff in 1977 as an offensive coordinator and said ESU became a destination for those who wanted to coach football. Every year when uh, somebody would leave, when people were actually knocking the door to talk to Denny to come to Strasburg University because they saw the opportunities once they were here to go other places. Mike Santella, the current offensive line and assistant head coach at East Strasburg University, was one of those who only wanted a chance. Coach Dowds was an opportunity giver. He would give anybody an opportunity that wanted to work hard and, and do their best, and, and he gave a lot of people an opportunity to play this great game and, for me, coach this great game. So he was a guy that gave a lot of people opportunities to reach their goals in their lives and changed a lot of people's lives because of that. Mike Twilliger was involved in all 471 games at Dowd's coach. He was a four-year starter at quarterback from 1974 through 1977 and then joined Dowd's staff. He now serves as the offensive coordinator for his son, and he's been part of over 500 games at ESU. The biggest thing with being with Denny was there were bigger things in the game of football, and that was young men's lives and getting people where they wanted to be, getting them their education and caring for them. And, and Denny, uh, that has rubbed off on me and we do it every day since. Another one of Dowd's quarterbacks who wanted to get into coaching was James Franklin. Franklin is the current head coach at Penn State University. Dowd's turned out to be more than a mentor. When I decided to get into coaching and be a graduate assistant for him, um, him and his wife offered me to stay with them until I figured out where I was living. So uh, I stayed with them in a little guest bedroom and I'd come home at night and um, 
we'd go sit back on the back porch and eat Klondike bars and tell stories. And he would talk about kind of stories within the profession. There's been a ton of coaches come through there over the years, guys that are in the NFL or major college football. And he just has such great experience and perspective and his wife is awesome. Um, just, just were, you know, treated me like family and really took care of me and uh, I'm forever indebted to them. Some of the other notable coaches who learned from Dowds are Brent Pry, head coach at Virginia Tech, Pat Flaherty, a former All-American who had a distinguished career as an NFL line coach, winning two Super Bowls with the Giants, Harry Heestand, the current offensive line coach at Notre Dame, Vic Fangio, former head coach of the Denver Broncos, and John Glenn, a starter for the Warriors Division II playoff teams in 2004 and 2005, who was the current linebackers coach for the Seattle Seahawks, winning a Super Bowl ring there in 2013. Hey Coach Downs, it's John Glenn here. Just wanted to send you a quick congratulations um, on getting inducted into the Pennsylvania Hall of Fame. Um, I still carry with me all the life lessons that you taught us as football players growing up at East Stroudsburg University. So thanks again, congratulations to you, wish you all the best. For Denny Downs, it was always more than just about coaching a team or winning games. The job became his life, a football life. A football life is about 363 days a year. You wake up in the morning, hey, what are we gonna do to get better? How are we gonna help th th this person or that person be able to overcome maybe the, the bump on the road in their life, uh, be able to do that? How are we gonna handle this group that we're playing on Saturday afternoon? to be able to do that. When you're not coaching in the season, then how are we gonna get that recruit? Or what are we gonna do for spring ball? Or what about the strength program, or running program, or conditioning program? And oh yeah, we gotta buy helmets and shoulder pads and shoes too. So you know, it, it, it was never boring. On Saturday, October 29th in Reading, Pennsylvania, the day had arrived. Denny Downs, along with 11 others, would be inducted into the Pennsylvania Sports Hall of Fame. I am just so happy for him. There are so many people here he knows and those he doesn't know him. And it's just, I don't know, exciting for him. Makes me happy. Makes my heart happy. One of the things that made Downs especially happy was that his collegiate coach from Slippery Rock, Al Jacks, was being inducted in the same class. Jacks coached Downs for three seasons and remembers him as a leader. Denny was uh, a very knowledgeable, complete football player. He had a grandfather, I think, who played pro football. He comes from a football family, and he was kind of dedicated. He was a natural leader. I mean, and he was an upperclassman. I, he was a sophomore, junior, and senior while I was there. And then that last year, we won the state championship, which helped all of us. Our next inductee is Dennis Dallas, as awarded tonight by his wife, Judy. You know, when you think about how humble this whole profession is of coaching, of trying to make other people better in their lives, the idea that he spent a lifetime trying to make other people better to achieve their goals and now see him get this kind of acknowledgement, I couldn't be more proud of him. Teddy Dallas, a native of Indiana, Pennsylvania, he took his football abilities to Slippery Rock University. He was a two-way lineman for The Rock and was voted Slippery Rock's outstanding student athlete as a senior in 1963. 1966, he showed up at East Stroudsburg University, never left. Jenny okay. Dallas. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here this evening. I'd like to thank the Pennsylvania Sports Hall of Fame for this great honor. You know, coaches really don't receive these kind of awards by themselves. In fact, Never scored a touchdown, never made a block, never knocked somebody down. That's not what coaches do. It's how much you know, but more important, how much you can teach what you know to the group that you have at that particular time, the team, to see how successful you're going to be. And you know, there's an old saying that goes, around and said, you know, if you surround yourself with good people,
good things are going to happen. Folks, I didn't do that. For you see, I was surrounded by great people. And for being surrounded by great people, I'm forever indebted to every one of those people. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you to every one of those players, coaches, and officials that I ever touched base with. And I certainly want to say thank you for this great award. It's a great honor. I'll accept it, but I'll dedicate it to all those great people that helped me stand up here and talk to you folks tonight. Thank you. It's the idea that one person didn't do it. Okay, it was a tribute to everybody that, that coached with us, that played with us, that were involved with us uh, over the, the duration as an assistant coach and as a head coach for 45 years. I've been truly blessed.